Good morning. I'll be presenting here the setup and application of two IMTA models that we've developed uh, for the North and Aegean seas within the IMPACT H2020 projects. So many recent studies have been showing that cultivating species from different trophic levels in close proximity within the same ecosystem is a promising solution for the sustainable development of aquaculture. However, the benefits of IMTA will depend on its application scale and on the trophic status of the receiving environment. But by integrating our current knowledge of the different processes driving water retention times, nutrient and light availability, the dynamics of cultivated species, and their competition with other living species into numerical models, we can investigate the potential benefits and limitations of different IMTA setups. And it's with this goal that we developed here two far field IMTA models for pilot sites in the North Sea and in the Aegean Sea. The North Sea farm is located 12 kilometers of the Dutch coast in the Rhine region of freshwater influence. That makes it a nutrient rich environment that is subject to high current velocities. The farm is composed of six modules of one square kilometer each, and the impact pilot site is located in one of these modules where Saccharina latissima seaweed and blue mussels are cultivated. The second pilot site is operated by Chamley, a company that produces sea bass and sea bream for 35 years. It is located off the Turkish coast in a very oligotrophic environment that is more sheltered. The site covers an area of 15,000 square meters uh, and is composed of three cages in which sea bass is produced and between which ulva rigida seaweed and Mediterranean mussels are cultivated on ropes. The two IMTA models were set up using the Del 3 dfm suites. Their offshore boundary conditions for hydrodynamics and water quality were forced either by nesting them into larger regional scale models or by using public data sets such as those from the Copernicus Marine Institute. Uh, the two models simulate water volumes and fluxes, uh, the transport and biogeochemical processing of different water quality constituents, and the dynamics of seaweed and shellfish within the IMTA farms. And these models can be used to assess the production yields of these cultivated species, but also to assess the far field environmental effects of different IMTA layouts. The simulated water quality processes include organic matter mineralization in the water column and in the sediments, nitrification and denitrification, oxygen reaeration, and phytoplankton primary production and mortality. Different modules are available for the simulation of phytoplankton dynamics, which can be more or less adapted for the simulation of different ecosystems. Two additional modules are used in the IMTA models. The MALG module is used for seaweed dynamics, and a dynamic energy budget module is used for the representation of shellfish, which also allows for the representation of feedback effects on the ambient environment. Uh, fish production is not explicitly modeled, but is included as an extra nutrient load. The seaweed module was developed within the IMPACT project and is based on a publication from Broch and Stagstad. It simulates the buildup of internal nutrient and carbon pools within the seaweed and the growth and decay of structural biomass. The size and the shape of the fronds is also calculated so that nutrient uptake can be computed in 3D. I'll go now more into detail into the setup and the results of the two IMTA models. The North Sea IMTA model covers a 70 kilometer strip along the Dutch coast. The grid cells are around one square kilometer each, which is about the size of a farm module at the North Sea farm. Model tests showed that at the scale of the North Sea farm, the little green rectangle on the map that just got circled, there is no visible limitation for seaweed and mussel growth within the ranges of 
production yield targets that we tested. And there's also extremely limited environmental impacts. That's why I directly jump here to the presentation of our upscaling scenario. In this scenario, we simulated the effect of co-cultivation of Saccharina latissima seaweed and mussels in three designated offshore wind farm areas that appear in yellow on the map. Uh, we assume that 25% of these areas is available for agriculture. And in the scenario, each IMTA farm is of the size of the North Sea farm and has target production yields of 10 kilograms of dry weight per hectare of seaweed and five of mussels. We compared for a whole production cycle, seaweed biomass on the left plot and mussel biomass on the right plot uh, for the different offshore wind farm areas and in the North Sea farm that is plotted as a blue line here. And what we see is that offshore wind farm areas seem more fruitful for seaweed, which we relate to higher current velocities and higher nutrient through flows, but they're less productive for mussels due to lower phytoplankton biomass. We then looked at the environmental effect of such an upscaling uh, scenario in terms of dissolved inorganic nitrogen uh, on the left, chlorophyll A in the middle plot and dissolved oxygen in the right plots. So the top maps indicate concentrations in the reference run without aquaculture, and the bottom maps represent uh, the difference in concentration between the upscaling scenario and the reference run. What you can see is that outside of the area of freshwater influence, Combined seaweed and mussel cultivation leads to a decrease in DIN and chlorophyll A concentrations, but mussel respiration is overcompensated by oxygen production by seaweed photosynthesis, which leads to an increase in oxygen concentrations. I will now go to our second example. So the second IMTA model covers the entire northern Aegean Sea. As you can see on the map here, which represents the grid cell area of the model, the grid is refined towards the pilot sites, which is indicated with the white dot of the Turkish coast. Um, this is an extremely oligotrophic environment and the only nutrient inputs that are included in the model are those at the southern offshore boundary, together with nitrogen atmospheric deposition and the exchange with the Black Sea. We added in the model extra nutrient loads to represent unused feed and fish feces in the three sea bass cages. And here we plotted the difference in total nitrogen concentrations on the left and in total phosphorus concentrations on the right between the run with fish cages and the run without aquaculture at all, so our reference run. And what you can see is that fish production, even at this scale, leads to a clear increase in nutrient concentrations in the entire bay. We estimated that this leads to a threefold increase in premier production in the bay over the production year. We then compared seaweed and mussel dynamics uh, within the pilot site without the extra nutrient loads from the fish cages and in the presence of fish cages. What the model shows is that the setup is not viable for ulva, which just decayed over the production year, even with the extra nutrient load from the fish. This could be solved by moving the ropes directly onto the fish cages, but the model grid would need to be further refined to be able to represent this. Mussels seem to not be able to grow uh, without the extra nutrient load from the fish cages but the full IMTA setup makes the mussel production possible. So I'll conclude on this, and I think these examples show that these models are valuable tools to study how ecosystems react to aquaculture and how produced species respond to an increase in competition or food availability. These models will benefit from future validation of the seaweed and shellfish dynamics, both in terms of production yields and nutrient storage dynamics. We also plan to include important extra processes such as feedback of farm components on water flows. And we believe that these will constitute important tools uh, for decision support at the ecosystem scale, both for farmers and regulators.
Thanks a lot for listening. I'll be happy to answer any questions.